Now, our next guest is here to tell us what goes on behind the scenes here at This Morning. Yeah, Chris Hossent is one of the team who makes this show happen because whilst it might look like we're just having a nice relaxing time on the sofa, there are actually loads of people doing technical stuff without which we would not be able to bring the show to you every day. Now, before we meet Chris, let's have a look at what he does behind the scenes. Hi, my name's Chris and I'm a vision engineer on This Morning. Let me show you around and introduce you to a few people that make the show happen and make us go on air. A vision engineer is responsible for the, out, for the video output of the programme. They, there's a sound, there's video and there's lights. And as a vision engineer you're responsible for the look of the video side of the, of the program. We also have to control the five cameras remotely in terms of the iris, the black level, the white level, um, all the engineering aspects of the camera are controlled from the rack position in there and that's the job of a video, a vision engineer. <coughs> Welcome to Vision Lighting. This is Philip, he does the same job as me and he's controlling the cameras. And this is Mark, he's the lighting director and he's in charge of lighting the show. My name's Mark Ewings, um, I'm the lighting director on the This Morning programme. We set up the lights for the particular look that the director may want. Uh, right, this is a typical lamp that we would use. Um, basically, uh, if you open it up, um, you'll see inside there's a, a bulb, uh, there's a reflector, and as you see, the movement on it, that's what we would call spotting and flooding. At the front here, that's what we would call flooded position because basically the, the bulb is near the end of the body and the light can spread further out like that. If you take it back, you're actually cutting down the amount that the light can spread out from the bulb, so you're actually closing the angle of the light coming out. Let's go on to the studio floor. Follow me. No, gotta be quiet on here. Shh, so no talking. Well, live TV is, as it says, live, and if something goes wrong, you've got to fix it there and then, or make sure that you have procedures in place to cope with any problems. And that, is, in itself, is a thrill. Um, sometimes you get cameras breaking down, sometimes you get auto cue failings, um, presenters have to ad lib around while you fix the problem, and all that creates a, quite a buzzy atmosphere. Well, we're in a break now so we can talk, um, but let me show you a studio camera. Um, it's got a big long lens on it and it's also got an auto cue on the front with some words to enable the presenters to read their links. We've got five cameras in the studio um, and they're simply operated with a zoom and a focus so that the cameramen can frame up and focus their shots according to the director's request. A cameraman will point the camera, will zoom the camera and focus the camera according to the direct director's instructions, but a vision engineer has to control the all the other parts of the camera, for example the iris level, the colour of the camera, how it responds to how the lighting director has lit it, the colour temperature of the camera, um, all the kind of different um, aspects. You want to try and recreate the look that the lighting director has made. This is what you use to Mel. Mel's your auto cue lady. All right, Mel. All right, mate. And she controls the speed of the words that the presenters read. This is the sound department, it's where they control the audio for the show. And this is Paul, the sound supervisor, and he's mixing the show. And Mark, the grand mop, who's playing him all the sound effects for the show. And Nikki, she's the floor sound engineer. Um, basically, I'm responsible for um, all of the miking up and rigging of equipment 
uh, in the studio, so from presenters and guests or music or effects. Um, the main situation that we have here is a uh, guest on the show and for that we would use um, a personal mic. Um, on our show we use a radio mic like this one um, which uh, you can call a lapel mic as well. It is omnidirectional which means it gathers sound in quite a broad way which is beneficial for humans who again move around quite a lot and don't always um, sit how you want them to sit. So this is a radio version of it. Um, which um, transmits uh, sound from the aerial uh, back to our control room for us to gather. Or you can have um, a line mic with a cable, which is the same type of omnidirectional microphone, but we connect that to a cable which physically goes back to the control room where we gather the sound. Then we have the sort of microphones that you'd use in a performance, like this one, which is an SM58, which is nice for a vocal sound. This particular one would have a cable, but you can get the same type of microphone with a radio. Um, and this one tends to exclude a lot of the background sound and has a very nice pickup of the sound waves to make a performance sound pleasant. And then if we were perhaps doing um, an effect of a car arriving or a horse-drawn cart or perhaps some people speaking in a location that we couldn't use one of these personal mics for, we would use um, a very directional mic such as this one which we would mount on a pole so that you can boom it into um, the area you want and this uh, particularly um, collects the sound waves at the front and excludes any background noise um, from these areas so you can pinpoint the sound you require and you have to be very careful with the boom whereabouts you locate the sound, um, the boom, so that you collect the, the appropriate sound. So you would need to have it, um, if I'm speaking like this, you would need to have it somewhere where you can collect that sound. If you had it over here, you would get the wrong sound because you'd be pointing in the wrong direction. <clears throat> okay, let me take you guys into the gallery. And this is where the director, the vision mixer, the producer and the PA sit. And the dire director decides which camera to cut up onto the vision mixer and the direction of the show. No talking, so keep your voice down. The dark forces I'm talking about, the dark forces, uh, we're only, that only comes from one side. And the gallery is the heart or the control room of the show where the director, the producer, the, the PA and the vision mixer sit and they're fully responsible for the editorial output of the show. The director will decide which camera he wants to cut up and will shout the camera number and the vision mixer will then cut that camera up and either do a mix, a fade or a, a wipe between these cameras depending on artistic license. Well that's a little bit about what I do as a vision engineer and what we do here at this morning. I hope you enjoyed it but I'd better go now and do some work. It looks very complicated. How do you cope? Well, surprisingly well, actually. If you um, prepare well, you prepare for the day's show in advance, and you test and you check all your kit properly, and you know your kit, then everything should go right. All the preparations are in place. Um, hopefully, nothing will go wrong, but if they do go wrong, then you'll just be firefighting and sorting out problems on the day, which is okay. So what did you do at school that helps you get this job? I did some science GCSEs, um, which took me towards doing a degree in broadcast engineering, which is quite a vocational degree, and you learn exactly how to do the job there. People always say, or they always imagine, that life in television or a job in television is going to be very exciting. Is it as exciting as it looks? The job's very exciting, actually, yeah. You, uh, no day's the, the, exactly the same. Um, sometimes you would um, come in and be asked to put a camera on a boat, for example, and go up the Thames, and you have to fix up a digital link back to the studio. Other days you might be asked to um, uh, rig a mini camera, get a mini camera working on a band. Um, some days you're asked to rack the cameras and for a performance and make an artistic opinion on certain things. So it's very, very, um, the variety is the key there. And also you get to see lots of celebrities. Chris, we do appreciate what you're doing and thank you for coming in to tell us all about it. It's nice to finally find out what it is that he does, isn't mm. it? Who is he? I have no idea. Yeah.